Kaan, Kaan. Shalom, Shalom, Maspaka. It's Captain Yaslam with the Malakim. And we got Officer here. We're both going to be bringing it out mightily on the Book of Tobit. Uh, we hope you enjoy and, and um, read along with us and, and get some edification from this. Hola, oh, Kaan. Yeah, Officer Dawada. How about some Yashabrak To the Captain, Shalom to everybody on the on the video. This is the Thaw Rock Thursday. This is the third installment of the Apocrypha. We're going to be doing Tobit. And just to give everybody a, a rundown again, this is a summary of the book of Tobit for anyone that, you know, comes and clicks on this video and wants to uh, learn about the book of Tobit. That's what we're going to go through. We're going to go through the whole book. Um, we broke it into categories and we're going to give everybody a summary. There's a lot of, a lot of meat in Tobit. There's a lot of deep topics. There's a lot, a lot of meat in Tobit, but I did want to start with kind of just going into the history of the book, quick little history, Not, but I'm going to start with this, what I got right here. So the Vulgate, which in my earlier videos, we went into the Vulgate. I have a whole video for the uh, Vulgate, the Septuagint and all that when it comes to the Apocrypha in the first video I took. So, you know, check those out when you got the time. But so we have the Vulgate places Tobit, Judith and Esther after the historical books, after Nehemiah. So that's where you would find them. Some manuscripts of the Greek version place them after the wisdom writing. So you see the Apocrypha kind of gets moved around, tossed around a lot with, you have so many different religions that touch on things and you know, some say it's not canon, some say it is canon, but we go off of it being in the Septuagint, which is the translation from the original scriptures. When you go into the uh, uh, Bible in the King James Version, you'll find the, the 1611, the Tobit and the Apocrypha is all in there. Now, this is all in the first video. So if you want to get more into that, watch that first video and we go deeper into the Apocrypha. This is going to be on Tobit. So, which we view being in the Apocrypha as a biblical book and a true book. So now, I put right here, this amazing book has so much that makes it amazing. Let's break it down in sections. Because there really is so much in this book of Tobit, we can talk about it all day. So I had to make sure, and let's put it in sections, and let's give you guys a summary of Book of Tobit. We're going to start with the first chapter. The first question I asked was, who was Tobit? So it was kind of hard for me to leave anything in this first chapter out. You know, I read this first chapter. I was like, this is a perfect introduction to this book, perfect introduction to who's Tobit. It goes over the Assyrian captivity. Our nation's sacred, our nation, Israel sacrificing the other gods, Baal. It talks about the tribe of Naphtali and Tobit being from the tribe of Naphtali, the history of our fall, you know, more history of our people and the upbringing of Tobit. So I didn't want to leave anything out of the first chapter. I was looking like, you know, where can I take? But it was nowhere. I had it. It's all got to be brought out. It's 22 verses. And we got the captain with me who's, um, volunteered to read thought with dog captain and i'm not going to interrupt you know it's the first chapter we're just going to read we're going to listen and then at the end we'll talk about it so captain saul on the screen you don't gotta look for it or anything i'll just scroll as you read start as wow. soon as you want. Oh, oh, it's chapter the, one um tobit chapter one and verse starting from the top the oh, book God. of the words of Tobit, son of Tobiel, the son of Ananiel, An An that's a tough one, the son of Aduel, the son of Gabriel, of the seed of Asael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Naphtali, the, Naphtali, Salakia, who in the time of Enemesar, king of the Assyrians, was led captive out of Thisbe, 
which is at the right hand of that city, which is called properly Naphtali in Galilee above Aser. I, Tobit, have walked all the days of my life in the ways of truth and justice, and I did many alms deeds to my brethren and my nation who came with me to Nineveh into the land of the Assyrians. And when I was in my own country, in the land of Israel being but young, all the tri tribe of Naphtali, my father fell from the house of Jerusalem, which was chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, that all the tribes should sacrifice there, where the temple of the habitation of the Most High was consecrated and built for all ages. Now all the tribes which together revolted and the house of my father Naphtali sacrificed unto the heifer Baal. But I alone went often to Jerusalem at the feast, as it was ordained unto all the people of Israel by an everlasting decree, having the first fruits and tenths of increase with that which was first shorn. And them gave I at the altar to the priests, the children of Aaron. The first tenth part of all increase I gave to the sons of Aaron, who ministered at Jerusalem. Another tenth part I sold away and went and spent it every year at Jerusalem. And the third I gave unto them to whom it was meet, as Deborah my father's mother had commanded me because I was left an orphan by my father. Furthermore, when I was come to the age of a man, I married Anna of mine own kindred, and of her I begat Tobias. And when we were carried away captives to Nineveh, all my brethren and those that were of my kindred did eat of the bread of the Gentiles, but I kept myself from eating because I remembered God with all my heart. And the Most High gave me grace and favor before Enemesar so that I was his purveyor. And I went into Media and left in trust with Gabriel the brother of Gabrius, at Rages, a city of Media, ten talents of silver. Now when Enemesar was dead, Sennacherib, his son, reigned in his stead, whose estate was troubled that I could not go into Media. And in the time of Enemesar, I gave many alms to my brethren and gave my bread to the hungry and my clothes to the naked, and if I saw any of my nation dead or cast about the walls of Nineveh, I buried him. And if the king Sennacherib had slain any, when he was come and fled from Judea, I buried them privily, for in his wrath he killed many, but the bodies were not found when they were sought for of the king. And when one of the Ninevites went and complained of me to the king that I buried them and hid myself, understanding that I was sought for to be put to death, I withdrew myself for fear. Then all my goods were forcibly taken away. Neither was there anything left me beside my wife Anna and my son Tobias. And there passed not five and fifty days before two of his sons killed him. And they fled into the mountains of Ararat. And Sarkadonis, his son, reigned in his stead, who appointed over his father's accounts and over all his affairs, Achiacharis, my brother An Anael's son. And Achiacharis, entreating for me, I returned to Nineveh. Now Achiacharis was cupbearer 
and keeper of the signet, and steward, and overseer of the accounts. And Sarkadonis appointed him next to unto him, and he was my brother's son. Follow it out, Captain. John. So, with that being said, there was a lot in that first chapter, and it was pretty much the whole upbringing of Tobit all the way up until this point. You know, it starts with them being uh, taken away into the Syrian captivity. Tobit, first letting you know, he's the tribe of Naphtali. So his father's all the tribe of Naphtali. He gives the fall of his father's, his tribe. They, you know, they started to sacrifice to Baal, having other gods. They fell, captivity coming into the Assyrians. And then Tobit talks about how when they were brought over here, our people were basically just becoming like the heathens, but he himself would still go to Jerusalem, keep the feast days. He was still living righteously for the most high. He wasn't sacrificing other gods, he wasn't doing it, he was keeping the law, but he's seen his people were going off. Now, he also seen that his people's dead bodies were laying in the streets of his own captivity. So, Tobit, being the righteous person he was, went and would bury their bodies, give them a burial. Make sure that their bodies got buried, but he was getting caught up for that now. So now he's getting caught up for that, but he's still doing it. But now he's upsetting the king there. He gets chased out. It says, and when one of the Ninevites went and complained to me to the king that I buried them and hid myself, understanding that I was sought for to be put to death, I withdrew myself for fear. So all of his stuff was taken besides his wife, Anna, and his son, Tobias. So now he's poor. And then five and 50 days. Actually, before I get into this part, I know Captain wanted to touch on this one. So I'm going to let it. Um, Captain, bring out the the two sons and how they, you know, they kill them. Give you a history of the in this part of the Bible, um, Captain. The I know you told me about the two sons and everything. That you can go ahead and touch on those. Oh, Khan. Well, I just wanted to give the timeline of, um, or at least just so people know. Uh, if you look up uh, NMSR, right, the the king of Assyria. It was around 727 BC, so we have an idea of um, you know what where where it's at time wise, um, and obviously we're in the Assyrian captivity here, and so it says Tobit was a purveyor in verse 13, right? So <clears throat> we have to understand like well what's a purveyor, you know? So. A purveyor is an officer who provide provided or acquired provisions for the sovereign, or meaning he provided or acquired food, right, <clears throat> for the king. That that's the sovereign, right? Sovereign meaning the rule, the ruler, which was the king, which was NMSR, under the prerogative of purveyance. Prerogative, prerogative, uh, meaning he was given that uh special privilege of having this position. That's why he talks about he had grace and mercy in this captivity, like um, like Joseph, right? Like Joseph did, even though he was uh, taken into uh, uh, Potiphar's home, right? And he was forced to serve. He still had a lot of favor, right? <clears throat> in, in his position. So that's what Tobit is basically saying. He's like, man, even though like, you know, we got it bad, uh, you know, I'm not eating uh, the bread of the Gentiles like my brother, you know, my brethren are, and I'm not serving their gods. And I'm given a nice position, uh, you know, as the purveyor for the king. Um, you know, uh, Most High has given me a lot of grace and mercy in this captivity. And we see it today, too, right? I mean, we, you know, if good positions, roof over our head, able to bring this word out um you know prospering and things like that in this captivity 
So, uh, you know, it can apply, uh, it applies then. It's still it's nothing new under the sun. We're still in the captivity now and uh, we can receive that grace and mercy and favor. Uh, but it all goes back to fearing the Lord and keeping his commandments. And that's what he was doing. He was uh, co uh, constantly giving uh, alms to his brethren. And if he's seen anyone in need, he was helping them out. And that's how we're supposed to be one for another. So it, it just shows in the favor that Tobit received. Um, but as we go further on, I don't want to um, spoil it, but as you see, we go further on, even though he received all these blessings, he still had a, a challenge to overcome. And we're going to see uh, how, how he, <laughs> you know, deals with that. And that, that should really sit heavy on our spirit to see like, no matter how much good you feel like you're doing, that doesn't mean that something can't still come up and be like, man, why did this happen? I was, you know, I thought I was on point with everything. I thought I was doing great. I thought I was, um, you know, doing everything the most I was asking me to do. I was on the right track, but man, this still came up. Well, it's not that nothing can't come up and, and Tobit is going to be a great example of that. All right, Captain. Just like Captain said, it's not that nothing can't come up, but it's what you do when it does. That's why anybody that is watching this that may have not read Tobit or it's been a while, tune in. Is this book, you can read this book, honestly, 45 minutes to an hour. So, but although it's not a long book, there's so much in it. It's like every word, every chapter. Like when we get toward closer to the end of this video, it, this book is, there's so much in it. So, Ending off this first chapter, so we know that Tobit had to flee because they were going to put him to death because of him um, burying the bodies of the Israelites that are being killed. But they're past not five and 50 days, so he's been gone for 55 days before two of his sons killed him, and they fled into the mountains of Ararat and Sark. Sarkadonis, his son, reigned in his stead. So two of the king's son killed him. Mm -hmm. And then his son reigned in his stead. Who, now, this is important. Who appointed over his father's accounts and over all his affairs, Akiakaris, my brother Annals, Annals son, Salakia, for butchering the names, you know, but. You know, there's a lot of names in the Bible that... Yeah, these ones are tough. I'll give yeah. you that. <laughs> uh, Anna, still... I say Anayels, though. Anayels yeah. and Yacharis, but... I was reading as... as I don't know. Akiakaris. Yeah, Akiakaris. Yeah. Akiakaris. That sounds better. Akiakaris. And Anayels' son. Yeah. That's how I'm, I read Nate Khan, <laughs> but... Um, well, that is nephew. Is that is that's what it seems like, right? Overall, Akiakaris, yep. my brother, Anael's son. Yep. That so that would be his nephew. And nephew. Right. Hans. That's important. That's why Tobit was able to come back to Nineveh. So that's how we get to where we are now. Tobit comes back to Nineveh because the king that wanted him dead dies. His two sons killed him. His two sons don't care about what Tobit was doing. His two sons put. Or they may not know. Let me say, let me not say they don't care. They may not know, but they appointed over all his affairs and his father's accounts, Akiakaris, my brother Aniel's son. So Tobit's nephew is over the affairs and his father's accounts now. So his nephew entreats him for him to come back. So now Tobit comes back to Nineveh. So with that, we're gonna move on to the second part that I have here, which is the love and alms that's in this book. Tobit's love for the nation. Tobit and his wife Anna's love for their son Tobias. Tobit's many alms and the meaning of alms. And then Tobit teaching his son the law. That's what we cover in here. And this is all throughout the book. You know, you can find scriptures on this, the beginning of the book, end of the book. All throughout the book, Tobit's talking about keeping the law and how serious it is. So we got Tobit 
14 and 9. This is Tobit. Before we read it, this is Tobit telling his son. This is chapter 14. There's only 14 birth. There's only 14 uh chapters in this book. So this is at the end of the book. So Tobit is telling his son. I don't want to spoil it. I'm just gonna read it. Tobit is telling his son, and I'll read this one, Captain. Tobit 14 and 9. But keep thou the law and the commandments, and shew thyself merciful and just, that it may go well with thee. So he's teaching his son these lessons. This is his love for his son. His love for the law. His seriousness about the law. That it may go well with thee. Take this law with you. There's a reason why he's telling him this at the end of the book, and we're going to get to that at the end of the book. But this is more law. Tobit 4 and 21. And fear not, my son, that we are made poor. For thou hast much wealth, if thou fear God, and depart from all sin, and do that which is pleasing in his sight. So all of Tobit's stuff was stripped from him. Remember that. That we are made poor, for thou hast much wealth. What is that much wealth? What did it say when, in the Bible, that scripture, Captain, it says, that you are poor, but you are not. Salakia, I'm messing it up. I know. I think no, you know about the about. revelation, right? Huh. I think so. Where it says that I know thy tribulations, but thou art rich. Or yeah, it's Con. some uh, yeah. Let me see. Con. Yes. Yeah, Captain. If oh, yeah. Keep... Revelations two and nine. Con, are we able to get that? Uh, this book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I, I don't know if you want me to grab the whole thing. Then it talks about, uh, you know, and I know yeah. them, but I know it's just that first yeah. part that kind of goes on to something else. But uh, that's, what, that's what's being said here, right? He said we're made poor, but we still have wealth because, because we fear God. And we and and we do all that's pleasing in his sight, and we depart from sin. We hate evil. So and depart from all sin and do that which is pleasing in his sight. So Captain just made it clear that Tobit is telling his son the same thing that we read in Revelations. Though we're poor here on this earth, but thou hast much wealth if thou fear God. That wealth is the love of God. That he'll take care of you. That's the covenant. That's it's everything that he gave to our people. That's that will. So, Tobit 4 and 18 through 19. This is more advice Tobit's giving to his son Tobias, showing his love to his son Tobias. Captain, if you're able to get Tobit 4 and 18 through 19, that would, uh, yeah. This is the book of Tobit, chapter 4, and verse 18 and 19. Ask counsel of all that are wise, and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Bless the Lord thy God always, and desire of him that thy ways may be directed, and that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. For every nation hath not counsel, but the Lord himself giveth all good things. And he humbleth whom he will, as he will. Now therefore, my son, remember my commandments. Neither let them be put out of thy mind. Uh, so he says, my son. This is Tobit talking to the bias. Neither let them be put out of thy mind. He taught his son the commandments, raise up, train up a child, and the way he shall go, and he won't depart from it. He brought Tobias up in this. Let them know, ask counsel of all that are wise and despise not any counsel that is profitable. So he's raising his son up know, to know that ask counsel of those who are wise, but to not despise it that is profitable. You know, he has to look at himself. What do we talk about? The inner cup. He also is letting him know, again, He's stressing that these commandments need to be kept. They need to be, you need to have the fear of the God, fear of the Lord, 
and he humbleth who he will. The Most High will humble you. Stay contrite. He's given his son all this advice to take with him. This is in chapter four. You can find it. Toby had much love for the nation, giving many alms in many ways. So now, after that, that advice he gives him, he gives him more. And this is a two-edged sword because he's giving his son advice, showing his love, but he's also teaching us how to give alms. The book of Tobit, chapter 4. Captain, if you're able to get 7 through 10, that would all. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, you have to 11. Do you want to 11? It's on 11 on oh. the screen. Slacker. Yeah, no I can just change it too real quick. Uh, all praises. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. Give alms of thy substance, and when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious. Neither turn thy face from any poor, and the face of Yahweh shall not be turned away from thee. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity, because thou alms do deliver from death, and suffereth not to come into darkness. For alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. Uh, so... That ending, alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. The Most High sees all these things. He says, "Give alms of thy subsistence. Give if you have abundance. Give alms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give accordingly, according to that little. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. The Most High sees this. The Most High blesses." Tobit surely gets blessed in this, even though it starts out rough. Most high sees his own. You know, and he's teaching his son how to give alms. So he's carrying it down because that alms do deliver from death. And that's proven in this book. Suffereth not to come into darkness. Moses is, I mean, not Moses, Salakia. Tobit is letting us know how to give alms, showing us the love of his son. So Tobit is establishing early on the type of man that he is. He keeps the law. He fears God. He teaches his son the law. He teaches his son how to give alms. He buries the dead of his people. He takes care of his people. We're going to get more of that here. Tobit 2 and 1 through 7. Now, I'll get this one, um, Tobit 2 and 1 through 7. I'll start with verse 1. And, yeah, Captain, I'll, I'll, I'll read this one right here. And I'm actually going to pause it at the, the first verse. So, verse 1. Now, when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me with my son Tobias, in the Feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks, there was a good dinner prepared me in the which I sat down to eat. So this is the perfect timing for this video to come out. Coming out Thursday. Feast of Pentecost would be this Sunday. And we're going to have a Feast of Pentecost video on the Shabbat. That's going to be the Shabbat class. So this is perfect for this to come out. Toby was keeping the Feast of Pentecost. This is when he came home again to Nineveh after he had let, had to leave for the 55 days. His wife was restored to him and his son. So right now, compared to how it was 55 days ago, it's looking up for Toby. Now he has a feast of Pena. He's keeping this feast with his family. He just got back. He just got his wife and son back. Verse 2, when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, Go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of your brethren, who is mindful of the Lord, and lo, I tarry for thee. So let's stop there. Why is he saying that? I think we already know where this is going. 
He already established about the alms giving. He sees abundance of meat, so he's going to give accordingly. He still needs some meat to celebrate his Pentecost, but he's like, we don't need this much. Instead of wasting all this food or just throwing it to the dogs, let's see. Because, you know, in the scripts, it says that dogs eat the, the table scraps. He's like, we have all this meat. Go and bring what poor man so ever thou shalt find out of your our brethren. Our brethren, that's a key point. Who is mindful of the Lord, mindful. So he said, don't just grab any random man that doesn't care about the most high. Who is mindful of the Lord and lo, I tarry for thee. So he says, come on, hurry up, go, go find a man that fits these requirements. But he came again and said, Father, one of our nation is strangled and is cast out in the marketplace. Then before I had, so I don't want to pause it too much, but verse three, you can see the type of captivity they're living in. It's just, they're people's dead bodies out there in the marketplace. He goes to try to do a good thing and they find that. Then, before I had tasted of any meat, I started up and took him up into a room until the going down of the sun. Then I returned and washed myself and ate my meat in heaviness, remembering that prophecy of Amos. As he said, your feast shall be turned into mourning and all your mirth into lamentation. So he remembers the scriptures. He rose up quick. It's showing what type of man Tobit is. He didn't bite into anything. He jumped right up. This meat can wait. And then he ate it sorrowfully because of what happened. He goes out there, gets a dead body of our nation, and hides him up in the top room until the going down of the sun. He washes himself when he comes back and ate my meat and heaviness, remembering that prophecy of Amos. So, even though Toby was a while back, they still have prophets before them. Just like we're reading the scriptures now, this is all unfolding now in front of us. But Toby, this was live, happening in it in front of his eye. The book of Toby wasn't written yet; he was still living it. So he sees that prophecy of Amos: "His feast shall be turned into mourning." He's mourning now for his people. Therefore, I wept. And after the going down of the sun, I went and made a grave and buried him. After this, Salakia, like this isn't script no more. But I wanted to touch on, because we can read the whole book of Tobit at this point, you know? Like, it, it was hard to leave anything out. But I want to give you guys a summary. And this, you can find this in chapter two. So after Tobit does this, he was mocked by his neighbors because, again, he was burying dead Israelites, which is what caused him to leave in the first chapter. He's getting, he got caught again. He's doing it at night. You know, maybe no one will see him. Nope, they were seeing him. When Tobit goes to sleep at the walls of his courtyard, because it says that he was polluted, you know, he was burying a dead body, a sparrow poops in his eye and he becomes blind. This is all the Feast of Pentecost. So it was all looking up. He's got his feast. He's got his abundance of meat. He's going to give some alms. He's got his family with him. And then this all just turns quick. Now he's blind. So now to Tobit's wife, Anna, picks up women's work and supports because he is now blind. So Captain had said earlier what Tobit's occupation was. But now he can't do it. He's blind. So now his wife, Anna, picks. it says she picked up women's work and she would send back to the uh sound sound like she was making clothes but uh it says that she picked up women's work and she would send them back to the people and that's how they were getting money and supports because he is not blind so she was helping him support him and later in the book it tells us that Toby was blind for eight years so this wasn't a small amount of time eight years and also captain if you have anything that you want to slide in whenever you want, because I know I can, you know, keep going, but whenever you want to slide in, if not, I'm just going to keep it smooth and running. John, all praises. Uh -huh. No, you did a great job. Uh -huh. So we're at 
the next, this is the, the next thing. Sarah and Tobit's connection. Now, if you haven't read the book yet, or if your memory might not, you know, have it, we'll refresh it. Sarah is big in this book. We're going to get into it, but we're going to show first the connection of Sarah and Tobit and how they're connected in this book. So, Tobit prayed that his life be taken away from him so that he did not have to live his life blind with everything that has already happened to him. You can find that in Tobit 3, chapter 3, verse 5 through 7, you'll see Tobit's prayer. He, at the, he, did, he does say, you know, let the most high's will be done, if it be your will, but... You know, if it be, he he said, let me return to the earth. And so he can be, so he can rest. And then it'll all be over. Get at peace. Just had a crazy life up till here. You know, took it into captivity. His people's downfall. Him seeing all the downfall of his people. Um, you know, this crazy captivity he lives in. And then he comes back. Now he's blind. So he's like, he, he, he's, he's just done. He's over it. So he prays to be taken off the earth. But on that same day at Ek Ekbatana in media, remember the first chapter we read that Tobit left money in media with Gabriel and, you know, his relatives. He left money over there. So media, there was a girl named Sarah, the daughter of Ragiel or Raguel. She had already been married off seven times. But all seven husbands had been killed by Asmod Asmodeus, the evil spirit, before they had been with her. We're going to get to him. Because of this, she was blamed by the people around her and thus she decided to strangle herself. However, she thought it over and decided not to kill herself because she did not want to bring her father sorrow with his old age being his only child. Instead, she prayed to the Most High that her life be taken away from her also like Tobit or have mercy on her. Like Toby. So she decided I'm not going to do this. But I'll ask the most high. It's in his hands. Have mercy on me. Or can you put me out of this misery? So we're going to read her prayer. Captain. Uh, if you're able to get the Tobit. Chapter 3. Verse 11 through 16. John. Oh God. The book of Tobit, chapter 3, verse 11 through 16. Then she prayed toward the window and said, Bless art thou, O Lord my God, and thine holy and glorious name is blessed and honorable forever. Let all thy works praise thee forever. And now, O Lord, I set mine eyes and my face toward thee and say, Take me out of the earth, that I may hear no more the reproach. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man, and that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father, in the land of my captivity. I am the only daughter of my father, neither hath he any child to be his heir, neither any near kinsman nor any son of his alive, to whom I may keep myself for a wife. My seven husbands are already dead, and why should I live? But if it please not the uh, Salakia, but if it please not thee that I should die, command some regard to be had of me, and pity taken of me, that I hear no more reproach. So the prayers of them both were heard before the majesty of the great God. 
Oh, you want 17 as well, Salakia? Huh. Oh, did I say 16? Salakia. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, 17. Uh, 17. And Raphael was sent to heal them both. That is, to scale away the whiteness of Tobit's eyes and to give Sarah, the daughter of Ragiel, for a wife to Tobias, the son of Tobit, and to bind As Asmodeus, the evil spirit, because she belonged to Tobias by right of inheritance. The selfsame time came Tobit home and entered into his house. And Sarah, the daughter of Rag Raguel, came down from her upper chamber. So this is all happening at the same time. You know, they're making these prayers. It says, Raphael was sent to heal them both. That is to scale away the whiteness of Tobit's eyes. So we talked about Tobit being blind. You know, he has that, the most ridiculous way to become blind. He A, a bird hoops in his eye while he's sitting down on the wall because he just buried one of his people's bodies. He looks up and it says that he didn't know that there was any bird on the wall. And he looked up right in his eye. You know, there's no coincidences. Right. You know, there's no coincidence. So now he can't see. It's like a whiteness in his eyes. He Oh, it also claims that he went to all the physicians and doctors. He went around talking to everyone and none of them could help him. Nobody could help him. You know, I'm sure he washed his eye out. So nobody could help him. He had this whiteness, like a film covering his eyes for eight years. So him and Sarah have something in common. They both were over it. They both prayed to the most high. That, what did she say? She says, take me out of the earth that I may hear no more the reproach. They prayed to the most high to be taken off took off the earth. So the most high is going to help them, going to answer their prayers and also show, you know, bless them, but also show them, you know, staying faithful to the most high and recognizing that, you know, these things happen for a reason. These are all lessons for us to be learned. And he, sp he saves them. You know, he hears their prayers. So that's where we get to this part. The angel Raphael slash Azariah. You get answering Sarah and Tobit's prayers. This is about guiding Tobias on his journey. We haven't even talked about Tobias's journey yet. That's where we get to this. Which is basically a good portion of the book. And then the fish organs to ward off the evil spirit and cure Toby. That sounds crazy to anyone that may not know. But this Bible has a lot of things in it that we still have to learn. And that we have to search out. Uh, Captain, if you're able to, it's a lucky I didn't put it on here. If you're able to get the credo, Malachian credo. And... We got to recognize that the Most High reveals things, the Most High conceals things. And fear God and keep the commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. God. You know, uh, there's still much to be learned. And he blesses us with wisdom when we keep his commandments. And he shows us what he wants to show us. So we just have to remember, stay in these laws, statutes, commandments, just like Tobit is preaching, give alms, just like Tobit is showing his son, and love thy brother, just like Tobit's doing, giving them a burial. Even that burial is an alms to them. Because who was going to bury them? If it wasn't for Tobit, their bodies would have just laid out there decomposing on the, I mean, who knows? 
I don't know. I don't know what would have happened to the bodies. Maybe they would have just threw them all in a pile and burned them. You know, they were just slaying them in the streets like that. I'm sure they didn't care about them. This is a captivity. So Tobit does that, risks his life for it, comes back and does it again. He's like, yeah, I almost got put to death for it last time, but hey, most high gets put first. And now he's blind, he got blinded. So Tobit's going through it. But Tobit being blind now and praying to be taken away remembers he left money with Gabriel in media. So remember, I brought that up. And he thought it would be wise to let his son know everything. Chapter four. Did, did you want the credo? Khan, it's lock it. Khan, Malachian credo is Proverbs chapter 25 and verse two. Uh, it is the glory of Yahweh to conceal a thing, but the honor of Malachian to search out a matter. Right. I said that off the top of the head, so I'm, I'm, I hope it was spot on, but I'm pretty sure I got it. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna put it in the on this on the screen, and you know what? Captain brought it off the straight dome. So <laughs> dog, dog, Captain, and yeah, we have to search out a matter. There's no just saying, you know, basically check both ways before you cross the street. You know, look. Look, search out a matter before you just blurt something out or say something's this. And I'm saying this for a reason because we're going to get to a part to where huh, that could be a whole nother class. So I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but I am going to read to you what it says. And we are going to, you know, talk about it. But most high tells us to search out a matter and also that things are concealed. You'll see because something is concealed in the story. So we're going to learn about it. Toby being blind tells us uh, he remembers he left that money. And so he tells his son. These are the four main, five main things he tells his son in chapter four. The summary of chapter four. He tells him because he remembers he prayed to be to, to die. So him thinking, you know, I'm probably going to die soon. Um, I don't want to leave my family with nothing. Tobias, give me a proper burial when I die. First things first. Obviously, Tobit is very big on that. You know, he was burying his people. He tells him, honor his mother and to not abandon her all the days of her life. Please her and not grieve her. And when she dies, it's like I put died. When she dies, bury her beside Tobit in the same grave. Okay, so that's the second thing he tells him. Then he says, revere the Lord all his days and refuse to sin and to live a righteous life and give alms and keep the Lord's commandments. Con. So he tells him these things and like you so there's so much in that third part revere the lord all your days refuse sin live righteous give alms keep the lord's commandments because he knows he's like i'm not gonna be here so you i'm not gonna be here to be getting on you letting you know give you any more advice you're gonna have to think on the things that i've said and remember these law, statutes, and commandments. That's the main thing, Tobias. He says, beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. Why is that important? Because remember, Sarah is the son of to Tobias's, I'm so lucky, the daughter of to Tobit's relatives, which would make her Not the survive. seed of my father's. Right. Captain, you were going to say something? 
Oh, so she would be what of the tribe of the tribe of Naphtali too, right? I believe so. Or Naphtali, uh, Naphtali, Naphtali. Um, yeah, because those are his. Those are his. Um, ah, Gab Gabriel is his. I believe his cousin, mm -hmm. or is it Ragel Salakia? The names I kind of mix up a little bit, but they are his relatives, his blood relatives, same seed. God tells him. The seed of thy father is taking out a strange woman, a wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. So oh, okay. Sarah. He wanted a specific tribe, right? Which is not of thy father's tribe. Yeah. God. And he goes on to talk about how the prophets took like their their family line. And um, he says that they are blessed, their children were blessed for it. But he tells him, and Sarah says, Sarah is Tobias's uh, cousin. So we know today people, you know, that's another talk, but he says, take not a strange woman a wife. Sarah is Tobias's cousin. So go to media, get back the money from Gabrielle as they have become poor and find a man to help the journey. So he, after he tells them all these things, so now Tobias has to get to media. Tobias don't know how to get there. He's never been there. He says that. So he says, go and find a man to help the journey. This is all in Tobit 4. So get to Tobit 5. Tobit finds Azariah. Book of Tobit, chapter 5, verse 4 through 5. Captain, if you're able to get that. Uh, and so he tells him to find a guide, right? He tells him yep. to find a guide. A tour I did guide. Have, yeah, a tour guide, right? To get to that place. Uh, I did have one real quick scripture of what Tobit is relaying to his son Tobias is right. Proverbs 22 and verse 6 train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it so that's everything he's doing right there he's giving them uh -huh. he's training them up telling them look if I ever go all these things need to be done and what you know and when is it going to happen when Tobias is older that's when it's going to so He's training up, um, training them up right now. So when he is old, he's not going to depart from everything that he agreed to, right? He's gonna, he's gonna keep all of these things. So I just wanted to bring that out. But come, um, let's go to the, let's go to the tour guide. Uh, oh, <laughs> Tobit chapter five, verse four and five. Therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael, that was an angel. But he knew not. And he said unto him, Canst thou go with me to rages? And knowest thou those places well? How that? So I put this part because it says, Therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael that was an angel, a Malachia. God. So that's how that reads. But he knew not. And he said unto him, Canst thou go with me to rages and knowest thou these places? So Azariah tells him, Yes, I can take you. Um, I know that place well. Well, the whole time he was sent for this reason. So Tobit 5 and 10 through 13. God. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 5, verse 10 through 13. Then Tobit said unto him, Brother, show me of what tribe and family thou art to whom he said dost thou seek for a tribe or family or an hired man to go with thy son then tobit said unto him i would know brother thy kindred and name then he said i am azarias the son of ananias the great and of thy brethren then tobit said thou art welcome Brother, be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family. For thou art my brother of an honest and good stock. For I know Ananias and Jonathan, sons of that great Samias. As we went together to Jerusalem to worship and offered the firstborn and the tents of the fruits, and they were not seduced with the error of our brethren, 
my brother, thou art of a good stock. All right. So that being said, said he was an angel, but he knew not. But then he says that he's from a tribe. Mm -hmm. That Toby wants to know his tribe. He wants to know who this man is, that he's about to send off with his son. Mm -hmm. He says, thou, he says, Salakia, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias, the great, and of thy brethren. So he says he's of thy brethren. Then Tobit said, Thou art welcome, brother. Be not now angry me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family. He says he's of an honest and good stock. Talks about how his family line is a good stock. His lineage. He gave his lineage, right? The angel gave his lineage. At first, he was like, did you hire somebody to know their tribe, or did you want me, a hired man, to take your son? What is it? <laughs> I mean, what is it you want? <laughs> so, that that's that. Uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that's what he says, that he was, he's Azarias, the son of Ananias the Great, and of thy brethren. Now, Tobias and Azarias head out on their journey, although his mother wept in fear of his life. You know, this is only her only son. This is a long time ago. There's no cell phones. There's no none of that. They're not getting a hold of him. You know, there's no way to contact him. They don't got a GPS. They don't got Life 360. You know, it's, he's out there. Who knows? If this is the first time maybe he's went on a journey like this without his parents, I don't know. Um, all I know is that he doesn't know how to get there and he's with a man that they just met. But Toby trusts him because he's of a good stock. He seems honorable. So Tobit tells her to have faith in God. Tobit being the man he is, brings her back to the Most High, says have faith in the Most High. And on their journey, when they stop by some water, Tobias is attacked by a giant fish. I don't know what type of giant fish it is. It says giant fish, but that had to be a pretty big fish to try to attack a grown man. But he kills it. And Azariah, I keep, I don't know, Salakia, Azarias, tells him to take specific organs in Tobit 6 and 6 to 8. So I put those right here. And I'll read this one, Captain. Verse 6. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarias, to what use is the heart and the liver and the gall of the fish? And he said unto him. So, he, so that's what Azarias told him to take. The heart, the liver, and the gall. He said unto him, Touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman, and the party shall be no more vexed. As for the gall, it is good to anoint a man that hath whiteness in his eyes, and he shall be healed. Let's start with verse 7. He grabbed this, for if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any. Reading up till him, it doesn't say that he knows Sarah. It doesn't say that he knows what's happening. That's just, it doesn't say that. What it does say is that the Most High sent the angel for them. So obviously he knows. Obviously. Now we know that the Most High told him or showed him or how you know the Most High communicated with him of Sarah and Tobias. He knows about Tobias being blind. He met Tobias. I'm just talking to Toby. He met Toby. He talked to Toby. But Sarah, up until this point in the book, you know, unless he heard word about her. I was going to say that, officer. You know, just like, I mean, imagine, uh, you know, how we have news here, right? I'm sure they had some form of, like, stories going around the city, right? I mean, it would be a pretty big, serious story, right? Seven husbands killed before you even laid with them. That's yeah, that's a big story. Around. You would see that on the news here, right? And you'd be like, "Oh, I know you. You're that girl that uh, had the seven husbands, right?" And, and, and they got strangled. 
<laughs> you know, so riding on a donkey throwing scrolls on everyone's porch. Right. So they can read the news. Right. Oh, no. God. Yeah. I mean, God. I just the scripture doesn't say, but you know, it that that that's something that could, you know, potentially be out there. You know, you yeah, heard it. something I don't know, you know. Right. But what I do know is that how he does know is because we'll get to it. We do know how I do know how he knows because it says it. But I'm just saying, you know, him being a man, but also an angel, but he's also the son of a man, another man. So mm -hmm. we're going to read more. It's just very interesting. And it's a whole other class. <laughs> God. As for the gall, okay, so like I read that. So. Azarias already knows about Sarah and her prayer and Tobit's. So he gathers these things for them to heal Tobit and help Sarah as he prepares her for Tobias. That's Tobit 6 and 10 through 17. You can read about that. And uses the fish organs for Sarah. This is a summary of that, but you can check Tobit 6 and 10 through 17 how he's preparing her for Tobias. And, you know, telling him um, you know, What's the plan? We'll get some of that right here in Tobit 6 and 16 through 17. Dawada, Captain, if you're able to bring that out. Uh, just the book of Tobit, chapter 6, verse 16 through 17. And when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber, thou shalt take the ashes of perfume and shalt lay upon them some of the heart and liver of the fish and shall make a smoke with it and the devil shall smell it and flee away and never come again any more. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you and pray to God, which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. And thou shalt preserve her and she shall go with thee. Moreover, I suppose that she shall bear thee children. Now when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her, and his heart was effectually joined to her. Fine. Right. So, with that first part, the ashes of perfume, it sh shall lay upon them smoke of the heart and liver of the fish, shall make a smoke with it. Something I don't know nothing about. You know? Um... Uh, this is what he's telling him to do. And the devil shall smell it and flee away. We know devil means deceiver. Mm -hmm. It says Asmodeus, the evil spirit. Could be a man. Could be something else that is above my pay grade right now. So my dad says above our pay grade. Mm -hmm. But it's something interesting. You know? Uh -huh. But it cool. says that when they smell it, they'll flee away. From the smell is the smell you know is the smell that bad you know every everyone did everyone in the room get out or is it a certain specific thing that affects this that this angel azariah azarias knows you know obviously he's very wise but you know just something to look into uh it says when they smell it you flee away and never come again anymore but when thou shalt come to her, rise up, both of you. So talks about Tobias take is gonna take her to be his wife, and she's gonna, you know, have children and all of that. And that Tobias instantly loves her when he hears that. And his heart is effectually joined to her. So he's sprung. He hasn't even <laughs> met her yet. <laughs> but he's like, I'm ready, you know? So Tobit 8 and 3. That was a beautiful thing too, because it says uh, they were they were meant for each other from the very beginning. Yeah. You know, so all these things, like you said, it's no coincidence. No you went to COVID looking up and getting blinded, right? All all these things happen at the specific, uh, the, at the perfect moments to basically put you on the course that the Most High already planned in the first place. You get what I'm saying? Like nothing is gonna is gonna go off from um 
how the most high allows. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to bend the most high's will or change it. People may try to act out their own dealio, but in the end, most high's will prevails. Mm -hmm. You know, the evil, all the way from the evil spirit to the angel to everything. Nothing happens outside the side of the most high. So, Captain, we're nearing an end, but there's still a big part towards the end. If you can bring out the Tobit 8 and 3, Thalada. Yeah. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 8 and verse 3. The witch smell when the evil spirit had smelled, he fled into the utmost parts of Egypt, and the angel bound him. Now Tobias had taken Sarah as his wife and lived because of the help of the angel Azariah Raphael, and he smells from the fish heart and liver. They celebrate their marriage, but are long, are gone long, and to Tobit and his wife become worried for Tobias. Oh, so Tobias. Lucky, Captain. <laughs> I was going to say this. Uh, yeah. I think it was just okay. Gotcha. Those are my words. Those are my no, words. All right, it was together. I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm reading your your notes. I didn't. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't want to add on to the word. I had to make sure I changed it into red. Oh, okay. I all knew right. that would happen. But I wasn't paying attention. Lucky. Let me read that three again, just so this is a lot here. All right. This is the book of Tobit, chapter eight and verse three. The witch smell when the evil spirit had smelled, he fled into the utmost parts of Egypt, and the angel bound him. All right. I want to make sure my words aren't scripture, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, my words, but they are about the scriptures. So now Tobias has taken Sarah, his wife. So this is just bringing us up to speed. Salakia, but the witch smelled when the evil spirit had smelled. He fled into the utmost parts of Egypt. He fled into the utmost parts of Egypt. Is it a man? Is it something else? You know, maybe something that someone would call a demon or something like that. Or is it a man? And then the angel bound him. We know this angel, he's a man. So, you know. They're not questioning anything about him right now. So if he bound him and they didn't question anything on how he bounded him, maybe he just held another man down. I don't know. Again, I don't know. That's what came but, to mind. Maybe binding someone is just to tie him up or, uh, or, you know, keep hold them down or like, you know, down them, yeah. keep them from moving pretty much or leaving. So, you know, there's many ways that can be done, but the angel bound them, and it looks like he did it, what, in front of them? So if it is not a man, wouldn't, they, you know, would they start questioning, Azariah, who are you actually? Or, you know, or if he wasn't man, he just held him down. Again, this is all things to study, and we should have some classes coming out soon, diving into this type of stuff. But that's why the Book of Tobit is so interesting. You know, if you haven't read it, check it out. If you have, but you forgot, refresh your memory. So, the help of the angel Azarias Raphael, and he smells from the fish heart and liver. They celebrate their marriage, but they're gone a long, a kind of a long time. Now, this isn't a year. This isn't, you know, it's just like a week or two. But it's still long to not be in contact with his parents. So, Spy says they must head back now. And that's when they heal Tobit with the fish call. So when they head back. But mind you, his parents are really, really starting to think Tobias is dead now. Um, it says it in the scripts. His mom is like my only son. She's like ready to die. She's, you know, uh, she's watching. It says she watches the road that he would come from every day, all the time. Obviously, Tobit can't, you know, he's blind, so all he can just, she's just watching 24-7. So, Tobit 11 and 7 through 13, Captain, I'll I'll bring this one out, yeah. just so, you know, we share the reading, so, you know, you know, got to read the whole thing, but, um, no yeah. Uh, and the soldier, Danya Allah, he, he, uh, been down for a little bit, so, 
giving him a break, giving the bishop a break, you know. The and we're gonna step up and bring out this Tara again, Tawada. And shout out to anybody in the chat, because you know, it's gonna be yeah. people in the chat we're gonna be premiering this live. No praises. So but 11 and 7 through 13. Then said Raphael, I know. Tobias, that thy father will open his eyes. Therefore, anoint thou his eyes with the gall, and being pricked therewith, he shall rub, and the whiteness shall fall away, and he shall see thee. My Jews been blind for eight years. Then Anna ran forth and fell upon the neck of her son, and said unto him, Seeing I have seen thee, my son, from henceforth I am content to die. And they wept both. So she's like, now that I know you're alive, I'm fine if I die right now. You know, at least you're alive. I know you're alive. She's weeping. She's so happy. So Tobit also went forth toward the door and stumbled, but his son ran unto him and took hold of his father. And he straight, he took of the gall on his father's eyes, saying, be of good hope, my father. And when his eyes began, to smart, he rubbed them. And the whiteness peeled away from the corners of his eyes. And when he saw his son, he fell upon his neck. So now he can see he's not blind anymore. It worked. Both things that Azariah said would work, worked. They had faith. Tobias didn't say, man, he went up right and did it. And it worked. You think if they knew about that, they would have did it already. You know? Uh, so they had faith. So now Tobias, Tob Tob Tobias has a wife. Tobit's not blind. Sarah and Tobit's prayers are answered. And they're all together. <clears throat> so. Um, Salakia. Tobit, 12 in 12 through 22, Captain, this is the very meaty part of the book. Captain, if you can get that, that would uh, help it 12, 12 through 22. Uh, it's the book, book, this is the book of Tobit, chapter 12, in verse 12 through 22. Now, therefore, when thou didst pray, and Sarah, thy daughter in law, I did bring the remembrance of your prayers before the Holy One. And when thou didst bury the dead, I was with thee likewise. And when thou didst not delay to rise up and leave thy dinner to go and cover the dead, thy good deed was not hid from me, but I was with thee. And now God hath sent me to heal thee and Sarah thy daughter-in-law. I am Raphael one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. Then they were both troubled and fell upon their faces, for they feared. But he said unto them, Fear not, for it shall go well with, thee, with you. Praise God, therefore, for not of any favor of mine, but by the will of our God I came. Wherefore, praise him forever. All these days I did appear unto you, but I did neither eat nor drink, but ye did see a vision. Now, therefore, give God thanks, for I go up to him that sent me, but write all things which are done in a book. And when they arose, they saw him no more. Then they confessed the great and wonderful works of God and how the angel of the Lord had appeared unto them. Huh. A lot was said. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. Let me put this down here and put it all on one page. It was a lot in that. Well, why did it want to jump all the way up here? Oh, whatever. Huh. So we'll start with, he said that he was there when they prayed and he heard them. It says that he, 
one of the seven holy angels. But there's only seven of them. He says that he, Salakia, he was there for the good deeds and the alms and everything that Tobit had did. They weren't hid from him. And now the Most High has sent him. So he already knew about Sarah. And my name's actually Raphael. Now I'm not going to say actually because, you know, he gives the name Azarias for a reason. Um, could have, you know, it says that he was concealing this for them. So, you know, he gives that he was the son of, I think, believe it was Ananias the Great. Mm -hmm. He's from that tribe seed line. But he also says he does this stuff too. So we know there's a lot of great men in the Bible that the Most High is blessed and allowed to do things that can't even, you know, imagine. But then there's also those angels with the Most High that, you know, like I said, look both ways where you cross the street. I'm not going to just jump out and say, oh, he's that, oh, he's this. Let's just read what he says he is. He's one of the seven holy angels which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. Well, then they were both troubled and fell upon their faces for they feared. He said, fear not. You know, and then also he tells them that all these days I appear unto you and I know I didn't eat or drink, but he did see a vision. So they were seeing visions of him eating and drinking. Why he would need to do that, I don't know why. You know, if he's a regular man, was he fasting or... He didn't want to eat or drink. If he was like, you know, some type of something higher than us, type of, you know, an angel of the most high. It's a lot. So, you know, I make sure to watch my words too, because there's a lot to this. You Can got really in the book. Come on, go ahead, Captain. Block your officer. I wanted no, to no. that um that verse 15. Talking about he's one of the seven holy angels, which presents uh, the prayers of the saints. Uh, so it's uh, Revelations 8 and 2 and verse 3 and 4. Revelations 8, 2 through 4. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So I just wanted to, to verify that this is verified in revelations chapter eight. There are seven uh, angels, which stand before the most high. And it talks about, uh, one of the angels, um, uh, now it says another angel, so I don't know if this is uh, besides those seven, but there is an angel which is uh, giving up the, uh, uh, you know, putting these prayers of the saints uh, into this um, uh, censer, right? And it's uh, uh, on the altar, Salakia, giving it on this altar, and it's uh, the smoke is ascending up. Uh, before the throne. Yep. Yeah. So basically what I'm saying is and like look and then they arose they saw him no more he disappears like Batman. Right. <laughs> so yeah. you know what you turn around in yeah. a Batman movie he's gone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so so <laughs> me I see where he gives his his family lineage and everything and then he also talks about being one of these seven holy angels giving them visions and he pre presents the prayers of the saints before the holy one and so there's a lot so basically it's just you know <coughs> so like it basically it's just he you know was he born okay if he had 
uh, family and everything. So he was born on the earth and lived all this time. As you know, he's a man, but the Most High is using him as, a, you know, doing something with him. Or, you know, he was, says he was sent down and it says that when they rose, they saw him no more. Where is it? It's a lot here. Uh, verse 21. I go up to him that sent me. So he's saying I'm going back up to him. So did Azarias disappear off the planet, the man, and get sent? But then we have that verse where it says, Yahweh Shai <laughs> being the one that descends, and then you got the uh, you know, but write all things which are done in a book. That's why that's that whole verse, probably one of the biggest verses in the whole book. That's the whole reason we have this book. He said, write all these things in the book. They did that. But then they arose and he was gone like Batman. So it's just all these things to consider. You know, did he live a whole life as a man on the earth as one of these celestial angels? Or was he just, you know, a regular man that the Most High was working through and doing something with? Or did he not live a life at all and he got sent down and then as Azarias and sent back up, I don't know. He did say that he had a family, though, and he had a dad, and, and you know, that's what he said. So we're going to take what his word says and not dive too much deeper into it, because again, you know, that's a whole class. We can get precept on, look through. Captain just pulled a precept out right there. That was a great precept. You know, we'll do a class on this type of things and get dive into that. That being said, we're going to close it out with, that's it. Close it out with this last thing. So after he regains his sight, he lives in prosperity. Tobit, giving alms, continually blessing God and acknowledging God's majesty. Before he dies, he called Tobias and his seven sons and told them to leave Nineveh. For the prophecies foretold that it would no longer be safe to stay there. So he brings up Jonah's prophecies to Nineveh. Talks about how this place can be destroyed. But Tobit tells him, I believe this is true. This is going to happen. So get out of here with your family. He also advised them that even if they came to bury their mother with him later, they should not stay longer than they should. And so they obeyed and lived in Ekbatana with his parents-in-law. His parents -in -law. So we're going to close it out. Tobit 14, 11 through 15. Thawa Doc, Captain. You can uh, close this out. All praises. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 14, and verse 11 through 15. Wherefore now, my son, consider what alms do it, and how righteousness doth deliver. When he said these things, he gave up the ghost in the bed being a hundred and eight and fifty years old, and he buried him honorably. And when Anna, his mother, was dead, he buried her with his father. But Tobias departed with his wife and children to Ekbatana, to Ragiel, his father-in-law, where he became old with honor, and he buried his father and mother-in-law honorably. He inherited their substance and his father Tobit's, and he died at Egbatana in Media, being an hundred and seven and twenty years old. But before he died, he heard of the destruction of Nineveh, which was taken by Nebuchadnezzar and Asuerus, and before his death. He rejoiced over Nineveh. Oh, no, Captain. That's going to close out the class. So now we got the whole life Tobit. And it says that he gave up the ghost in the bed being 108 and 50 years old. So it's saying he was 158 years old. Earlier, if you go into the book of Tobit, you'll see that it says he uh, was blind for eight years. And then he came blind, I believe it was 50... 56 or 58 but he so he basically after he he gets healed he lives almost a whole nother hundred years mm -hmm. so he prayed for death and lived almost a whole nother hundred years god 
to the most high blessed him. And he gave up the ghost into the bed. Most high gave him a graceful death. He didn't right. die in a terrible way. Mm -hmm. Died of old age in his bed. And then they buried him honorably. So now his mother's dead. He buried her with his father, just like he said, told him to do. And then Tobias departed with his wife and the children back to Ekbatan Ekbatan with his father-in-law. He got back out of Nineveh. He just went to bury his mother. He knew how important that was, and he knew how important it was to get out. And then he became old with honor. And he buried his father and mother-in-law honorably. So they be they were they were his family. But you know, they we you know he buried them honorably just like his own mother and father. And then he inherited their substance. So he got their stuff, everything that they had, and his father Tobits. And he died at Ekbatana in Media, being 107 and 20 years old. So about 100, it says 127. So he lived a long life too. Honor thy father, mother and father, uh, yeah. and thou shalt have long life. I may have not said it verbatim, but <laughs> Kev, you know what script I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's facts right there. I mean, look at right. Tobit and Tobias as an example of that. Yeah. You know, long life. Fear the Lord and keep the commandments. But before he died, he heard of the destruction of Nineveh, which was taken by Nebuchadnezzar and Assyrius. And before his death, he rejoiced over Nineveh. So right before he died, he seen the prophecy unfold and he rejoiced over it. That wicked city that was killing our people in the streets. Our people were dead in the marketplace. So he rejoiced over the destruction of Nineveh. And with that being said, Bawada Captain for coming on and reading and okay. <laughs> inputting Bawada. Bawada for everybody in the chat when this is running live. Bawada for anybody in the future that may watch this video when it's not live. And say Yahal Bashim Yasha Barakata. Yahal Bashim Yasha Barakata to Captain. To the congregation, and we're going to close it out. Bawara Thursday. Bawada, family. How about Shim Yasha Barakata? But Bawada coming on and reading. Maybe only. Oh, no praises. Great work, officer. Bawada. Shalom.